So let's have a look at, at modeling the first of our moments then. So this is the roll moment. So you'll remember from that figure that we had uh, the, the roll moment in the trim condition is given by LA subscript one. And that is based on what we're gonna call the roll, roll moment coefficient at the trim condition, the dynamic pressure, the wing reference area, and we're also gonna use the wingspan to characterize this roll moment. So our uh, coefficient um, of roll moments is gonna be a function of uh, the same the same three terms as we had for model, modeling the lateral force. So the side slip angle, aileron deflection angle, and the rudder deflection angle. And again, as always, we apply a Taylor series expansion to this thing to get this expression here. So again, because of the symmetry of our aircraft in the XZ plane, if we have no side slip angle, no aileron deflection, and no rudder deflection angle, then we have no roll moment coefficient, um, again, because of that symmetry. So then that leaves these uh, roll moment coefficients, which I've labeled one, two, and three, because we're gonna, we're gonna derive them uh, individually. The first one due to side slip, the second one due to aileron deflection, and the third one due to rudder deflection. And um, the main contributing factor to the uh, coefficient of roll moment due to side slip is due to wing dihedral. So we'll have a look at that right now. So looking at this first term here, CL beta, we can split that up to look at the effects on the wing and body combined, the horizontal tail and the vertical tail separately. And then what we're gonna do at the end is sum all of those up to get a total CL beta. So we'll deal with the effect on the wing and body combined in just a second, but let's deal with these two as they're a bit simpler first. The first one, roll moment coefficient due to side slip on the horizontal tail, again, is typically zero unless we have a significant dihedral angle on the horizontal tail. Again, see the F4 for an exception to this particular rule, but in general, uh, the roll moment coefficient due to side slip on the horizontal tail is zero um, due to um, zero or very negligible dihedral angle. Next, let's have a look at the roll moment coefficient due to side slip on the vertical tail. So in this diagram here, you can see a positive side slip angle onto the vertical tail gives you a lateral force in this direction, right to the left, so that's negative y. So you get a negative lateral force, but because the tail is upwards in this plane, right, you get a roll moment to the left, so left wing down, so that's a negative roll moment due to positive side slip. Obviously, if the tail, the vertical tail was underneath, you'd get the opposite effect, right, but again, that's quite unusual. And we can find the moment arm associated with that force by just considering geometrically where the centroid of the area of the uh, vertical tail is and then multiplying that moment arm by the, uh, the coefficient of lateral force due to side slip on the vertical tail, which we derived in the pre previous section. So moment is um, force times the distance, right, where we've non-dimensionalized the distance with respect to the wingspan. So the last thing that we need for this particular particular equation here is the roll moment coefficient due to side slip on the wing and body. And this actually includes three separate effects, which we're going to discuss over here. So the first one is due to dihedral angle. So here's a low wing aircraft with positive dihedral angle. So with a positive side slip angle, so coming from the right, from the pilot's right, so this is aft looking forwards. So with a positive side slip angle, so coming from the right, we essentially get a higher angle of attack on the right wing 
than we do on the left wing because of the incidence angle here, right? So that gives us more lift on the right wing than the left wing, and therefore we get a roll to the left. So left wing down, that's a negative roll moment. And the opposite is true for a negative dihedral angle. So in this case, positive side slip angle gives us less lift on this wing than we get on this wing. And so we get a roll to the right, right wing down, which is a positive roll moment. The next effect is due to what's called fuselage wing interference. And this is characterized by either high or low wing aircraft. And basically what happens is if you've got a high wing aircraft, airflow coming from this side, so positive side slip angle gets trapped between the fuselage and the wing, and therefore you get this force upwards on the right hand wing coming from underneath rolling the aircraft to the left, so left wing down. So for a high wing aircraft with positive side slip angle, you get a negative roll moment. And the opposite is true. So for a low wing aircraft, again, airflow gets trapped in this region here that causes a downwards force on the right hand wing and therefore it rolls to the right. So a positive roll moment for low wing aircraft with positive side slip angle. Now, uh, just pause for a second here. It is typical for these two uh, effects to be mutually exclusive because normally low wing aircraft have positive dihedral, right, to stop the pilot from clipping the wings on the ground, right? And normally high wing aircraft either have no dihedral angle or very slight um, dihedral angle. So these two effects are generally mutually exclusive. The final effect here is the one due to sweep angle, and this is probably the most intuitive one. So for positive side slip, the component of the airflow is more perpendicular to this wing than it is to this wing. Right, and therefore you generate more lift on this wing than this wing, and therefore you get a roll moment to the left, left wing down, which is a negative roll moment. And you can work out those components of the free stream flow onto either the right wing or left wing using these equations here. So what we do is we characterize each of those three effects and then put them into this mess of an equation over here, um, which uh, has a load more terms in it, a lot more graph checking, um, eyeballing of different charts to find out what some of these coefficients are. So I'm not going to go through what each of these nine coefficients are. You can read it for yourself if you want to. Um, but basically all of those considerations that we've just discussed, like the one due to sweep angle, the one due to dihedral angle, um, the one for high versus low wing, are all included in terms in this equation. Um, by the way, these 57.3 um, constants keep cropping up everywhere. That's just because that's the conversion factor for radians to degrees, right? Um, so. Once all of that goes into that equation there, a lot of graph checking, a lot of eyeballing of charts, some, um, some formulae to um, put some of our known dimensions in, and we get a value for the roll moment coefficient due to side slip on the wing and body. And therefore, we have everything that goes into this equation here. Sorry, this equation right here. So we've discussed those two. That was the one that we've just discussed that has those three effects contributing to it. And all of that stuff is the roll moment coefficient due to side slip, which eventually is going to go into there. So right now we've just, we've just dealt with this um, term here, number one. So to find term number two then, which is the, lift, the roll moment coefficient due to aileron deflection, um, bef 
before we get into the math, um, just recall which direction is which for the aileron deflection. So positive aileron deflection is the trailing edge down of the left aileron and trailing edge up of the right aileron so that we get a positive roll moment. So right wing down is positive roll moment. And that's because we've essentially increased the angle of attack of this part of the wing here um, because the, the trailing edge goes downwards and therefore the cord line has a greater um, incidence angle to it. So we get more lift on this wing, we've decreased the angle of attack on this ring for the, the opposite reason, right? So therefore we get a roll moment to the right. So as I say, this is a five step process to calculating this term. Um, we need to find some geometric dimensions about the uh, aileron itself, so how long it is, um, where it's positioned, that kind of thing, and the inboard and outboard um, coordinates of the aileron are given subscripts O and I. That tells us something about how effective the, the aileron uh, is um, by finding what's called the roll moment effectiveness factor. We need to know what the taper ratio is, we need to know what the aspect ratio is, we need to know what the sweep angle is, that kind of thing. That tells us what the roll moment effectiveness factor is, uh, tells us what the um, aileron effectiveness factor is, right? Then we can continue, put that value into this equation here, which is based again on this K, which is to do with the uh, lift curve slope of the particular wing section that we're considering, in this case, this part of the wing section. Then finally, we can put all of that into this CL delta term, which depends on um, the effectiveness factor of the aileron itself, and also this term, which is found from, again, looking up a chart, based on the mean aerodynamic cord of the aileron and the mean aerodynamic cord of the wing where the aileron is located. Once you've done all of that, then the final thing is to consider the asymmetric nature of the ailerons, right, one goes up, one goes down, and then you consider 50% of this term for right and left. That goes into this equation here, um, but then the, the total aileron deflection is half of the difference between the right and the left. And then finally, um, you can take that, put that into that equation and differentiate with respect to delta A, right? So remember these are with respect to, so this is the roll moment coefficient um, due to aileron deflection. So we differentiate with respect to aileron deflection and we get this. So then once you get this, that's what goes into here, right? So now we have this, we're approximating a zero, we derive this just now. This is the latest thing that we just have, so we're just left with the roll moment co coefficient due to rudder deflection. And let's consider how we do that. Well, the just like the aileron deflection term, the rudder deflection term depends on both the size of the rudder itself and the moment arm at which it's acting, right? So that's based on these two distances. Firstly, the centroid of the vertical tail, and secondly, the centroid of the rudder. They could be very similar to each other, but there could be an offset. As I've said in the past, it's typical for the rudder be to be high up on the vertical tail, to be out of the, uh, the wake of the horizontal tail. So once we know those two distances, that gives us our moment arm, um, for where the force is applied. So the roll moment coefficient due to rudder deflection is the, um, the lateral force coefficient due to rudder deflection, which we derived in the previous section, multiplied by the moment arm. So if we put that a little bit more simply, basically if we deflect our rudder to the left, so that's a positive rudder deflection tail at at ta trailing edge left, right, that gives us a lateral force to the right, which induces a positive roll moment. So again, once we have that term, 
That then goes back into this equation over here, and we can calculate our roll moment coefficient in the trim condition by summing up all of that stuff there.